What is up, guys, and welcome to the Score Esports Podcast. As per usual, I am your host, Colin. In the booth with me, we got Josh Burry. Hello again. We got Daniel Rosen. Greetings. And we're doing something different this week, guys. We have a really cool guest on, as usual. We always have cool guests. But this week, we've got a guy who is primarily a streamer. You know our podcast mostly for our esports guests. And when we do have streamers on, they're often ex-pros or pros who stream on the side. But this gentleman, Chad Goff, is better known as Just Chad, is a prolific PUBG streamer. Now, he does have a little bit of a background in Rocket League, which we will get into, but that's probably not where you know the guy from. You either know him from his personal PUBG stream, or you may have uh, seen him play with Shroud. So, Josh, without further ado, I should just shut up, and we let's get Chad on. Chad, thank you for joining us. Hey, happy to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure, man. Like I said uh, at the top of the show, we usually deal with esports people, and like if they are streamers, they are ex pros or pros who are on the off season streaming. So you are like our first full time, like one hundred percent stream guy. Yeah, I'm just I'm just a streamer, baby. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> you're not just a streamer because as I alluded to also in the intro, uh, and I didn't know this until a few days ago about you, but you, you have a background in rocket league from a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, I do have a little bit of a background in rocket league. Um, I, uh, I was streaming, I've been on the platform Twitch for, I was in high school and I started, I think I was a sophomore in high school. Um, so that was back in 2012, 2013. Right around there. And um, I was like streaming, playing Counter-Strike, DayZ with just homies and whatnot. And then Rock League came out and uh, right off right off rip, I was already pretty good at it, like a little better than most I would say. So it, it kind of inspired me to really pick it up and just go ham with it and see how good I could really get. And uh, that led me into playing with um, Cronovi, who's like, you know, the, one of the biggest names in Rock League. And uh, that kind of just blossomed into uh, like a friendship and... Um, I just hung around that community for a while, competed a little bit. You know, I wasn't like the best or anything, but I, I was I was able to hold my own against like some of the other pros and stuff. And um, you know, it, it was it was definitely a fun little experience uh, away from streaming, and it was nice to get into sort of a competitive scene at a high level. You know. Okay, gotcha. So for you, if I'm hearing you correctly, it was never a case that hey, you know what? I'm actually going to be an esports pro. This is going to be my career. It was just sort of something different from what your normal routine would have been. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was always pretty decent at the game, like I said, but um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to really compete at the top and I, I wouldn't have the time to really put into it to uh, keep at that level. So it was just a little bit of like a one-off thing that I was just really, really happy doing and uh, something I really enjoyed spending my time on. Chad, I'd like to ask, um, I, you know, I think Rocket League has had an interesting growth o over the past couple years. But I, I'd like to ask, like, what what drew you to the game? Like, maybe if, if I'm an esports fan who's heard about Rocket League, but you know, I've never I've never really played it, or maybe I've only watched a little bit of it. Like, what is it do you think that makes the game attractive, or that made it attractive to you? Um, for me personally, it was just the uh, the mechanics of the game. Right, there's a lot you can do, and a lot of ways you can manipulate your car, and it's just it's a really simple game, right? So it's easy to hop in, play a quick five minute game. And then go do whatever, you know, if you don't want to sit down and play for hours. Whereas, like, you know, a game like PUBG, you hop in, you end up winning that game. That's going to be like a 40-minute game, you know. So it's it was nice, uh, nice quick games, you know. And it's just like it's very, you know, you pick it up and you go. Everyone understands it. It's very simple to understand, you know. It's just soccer with cars. And, uh, you know, you could do pretty much anything uh, with the mechanics of the game. And people to this day are still figuring out, like, new little quirks with the mechanics that can give you, you know, in a very, very specific situation, it'll give you, like, a leg up on your opponent if you have this mechanic mastered. But it's, you know, it's very situational, and it's it takes a lot of time to really break the game down to that level. I, I want to ask if, like, you mentioned that you were already streaming for all before that, like, since you were, since, what, you said 2013-ish, um, when you were in high school. Mm -hmm. What was, yeah. you know, what I guess, what what got you, were you just streaming like, oh, no one's going to watch this, or was it like a concerted effort, like, Let, let's let's do a streaming thing? I, I, obviously, streaming wasn't like a career back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, Um, that was sort of like, uh, you know, when like the only people really making a living off streaming were people like, you know, Soda Pop and Lyric Summit, and, you know, they were just getting there. It was just becoming realistic for them to sort of do that. And for me, I think it was more so, grow like growing up, I always really enjoyed gaming. Um, you know, I'd, I'd play with my brother. We grew up, we had like, a, you know, any console you could name. Um, you know, we played PC games. And it was just sort of that uh, that environment of sort of sharing your experience in a game with other people, you know? 
it's uh it, my some of my best experiences like from growing up were just when all the homies on the street would get together and we just like hang out and play xbox all day you know and uh that's sort of what streaming was for me initially you know i just hop on we had a team speak everyone would meet up in every day and just like hang out and play whatever game we wanted to play and then the stream on the side was just sort of like it was a fun little thing it was really new to me and um it was just uh it was a way to sort of just share you know my experience with everybody and uh, sort of bring me back to those days of sitting on the couch with all the homies you know playing a game through taking turns and just having a good time so what was the moment for you when streaming in your mind went from yeah this is a throwback this is fun i enjoy this as an aside to you know what i i could actually make a career out of this i want to do this six days a week 10 hours a day yeah um it was always sort of uh like i really enjoyed it to the end gaming in general just to the extent that when i was in high school you know like especially my junior and senior year i wasn't really going to class you know i'd be up all night playing csgo with like shroudy and josh and summit and whoever you know i'd be up till 6 a.m and i wouldn't really go to class so i already kind of had that gamer bug that uh made me sit down and play for eight hours at a time you know if not longer um i think streaming for me really got kind of serious i guess you could say um just this past year when it started uh well, like when PUBG came out, I played a little bit of the beta. I was kind of like whatever on it. But then when it launched, um, all my friends just started like playing games together again. You know, like, you know, Josh, Summit, Shroud, uh, anything, like just all the homies from back in the day. They sort of came back. Everyone came back from their own, you know, whatever they were doing, you know. And uh, we all just kind of came back together and started gaming again. And that's sort of where I found the fun in it. Um, I was actually, uh, I stopped sort of you know, with Rocket League stuff a little bit with, with streaming and everything when I went to college for a semester. And uh, I just wasn't really happy doing that. So this was sort of uh, what jumped me back into streaming and what turned into like a full-time gig for me was just the, the launch of PUBG and just getting to, you know, hang out with all my friends online and just game all day. Chad, you said something that's really interesting and in hindsight, it seems very obvious to me, but I had never thought of it, thought of it this way because you know the the experience of sitting down and playing a video game with someone else in the same physical space doesn't happen as often as it used to right you have all your buddies over you know play halo that, that was a big one for me when i was younger so yeah was halo there. yeah and uh and and do you, so so it's interesting that you say that like streaming in a way kind of has that same social implication even mm -hmm. though you, you know, obviously all your viewers aren't necessarily playing with you, but they're at least sort of present with you. Can I ask, yeah. can I ask what, your, what your sort of philosophy about your viewers is? Like, do you have a specific kind of community you're looking to create with those viewers when you're like sharing that, the gameplay experience with them? Uh, definitely. Um, I mean, I'm, I like to think I'm pretty like laid back dude for the most part. Um, so that's kind of just the environment I like to create on my channel. Um, obviously, I like to have fun. I'll get really hype, you know, especially when I'm playing with the homies and we're just all having a good time. You know, we get loud, we get rambunctious. But um, the the overall environment, and I think that's what draws a lot of people to my community, is just I'm, I'm pretty laid back. And, um, you know, I try to be just like as real as I can be with my viewers. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. And it's not necessarily something you see a lot nowadays and I'm not saying like everyone's fake but I think just being completely unfiltered and raw and just you know just being honest with everybody is uh is not necessarily something that thrives as well in this sort of like entertainment industry but I think it's something that people really appreciate okay so the, you gave me the perfect segue here <laughs> so I, I was I was tuning into the stream I think it was yesterday or tuesday maybe i think it was two yeah. days ago tuesday yeah. and um you were playing PUBG. you missed a few shots with the 98 over long distance and you said I i'm really low motivation right now i don't even feel like playing this game really and that is yeah. pretty raw honestly because you know like a lot of yeah. people would, would be like would just try and not just expose that sentiment maybe right. To yeah the chat, right so so my question is like are is the game starting to get old for you? Is, is, is it your schedule that's like really t having an impact here or is it maybe something else entirely? Um, uh, I think it's a mix of those things. Um, I don't think necessarily I'm, that's like, I like I'm burned out on PUBG. Um, I really enjoy the game. It's still like my favorite game right now. It's a lot of fun to hop in and play, but, um, it's just sort of a buildup over time, right? I, there's been a lot of issues with, well, me personally, I feel like there's been issues with uh, the way the game is being developed and, um, you know, how they're communicating with their community and how they're pushing updates. 
and that just sort of gets frustrating, right? When you feel like your voice isn't really being heard as a part of the community and you feel like they're not listening enough to the people that, you know, populate their game and make it what it is. Um, I feel like that's something that's definitely frustrating when it comes to playing PUBG like all day. Um, other than that, you know, just just the day to day grind gets a little bit tedious sometimes. Um, maybe, you know, I need more, you know, social elements in my life. I don't really get to go out as much as I used to, for example. Like I'm living in Colorado now with Josh and, uh, you know, I don't have any friends in the area. Uh, you know, I'm not planning stuff to go do. I kind of just wake up, mm. hop on stream, game all day, you know, get off, do whatever and then do it again the next day. So I think it's it's a combination of of those things and just um, just the struggle to sort of find something else to do uh, with my time that I really really enjoy, you know. I'm glad you brought that up actually because I did want to talk about your schedule and your lifestyle and how you balance that because it blows my mind full time streamers like you who like who make a career out of this thing like how much time your ass has to be in that seat, you know, <laughs> and that camera. Oh on. yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's just crazy, man. Like you, your streams are 10 hours or every day other than one. I, th I think you're six days a week, right? And yeah, I mean, I have like a scheduled day off. Well, like it's not really scheduled, but like every Thursday is sort of like the set day that if I do take a day off, it's probably going to be a Thursday. And that's just sort of like I, I try not to like constrain myself to a schedule, but I typically end up streaming almost every day of the week. Yeah, that's fair enough. I, and I guess my, my question is like, how do you stay not only like mentally healthy doing that, but honestly physically, because I have a 40 hour a week job where I sit in a chair. It's not even close to how much time you do it. And I feel like I have to get up, go to the gym all the time, like, or else I'm going to melt, you know? Yeah, right, right. Uh, I think I was pretty fortunate growing up. Um, you know, I, I grew up, uh, it was me, my mom, my brother for the most part. And she was always very, um, you know, she was like a bodybuilder when she was younger and she was always very healthy and we ate really lean and me and my brother played like every sport you can name under the sun. So just, I think growing up in that environment, understanding like how important health was and everything like that's kind of just set me up for the future. Right. I've already, um, been working out my whole life. I've, I've been involved in various activities. You know, I wrestled, I played hockey, played soccer, football, what anything you can name. And, uh, I feel like that kind of just. It, it taught me how important health was and like how easy it is really to, to eat healthy and sort of manage exercise and all that stuff. And, uh, to, you know, to be honest, it's good genes too, you know, metabolism, all that good stuff. And it's just sort of made it so I don't have to really work out as much. It's been something I've been trying to get back into though recently. Um, been thinking about like picking up a hockey league or just doing something that I would really enjoy in my spare time. That kind of gets me moving. How, how old are you, Chad? If I may ask 21. 21 yeah yeah so i'm definitely a high metabolism guy myself let me tell you mm. man when you get to that 3-0 <laughs> you are gonna need yeah. that hockey league because that yeah. shit slows that's down. why I'm, I'm trying to build those habits now you know so i'm not like just sitting on my ass all day when i get a little bit older so okay i'm glad you brought up the the physical aspect and it's very heartening to hear that it's top of mind for you but what about uh the mental aspect because you were talking about how you're in you're in colorado and you don't necessarily have a lot of friends there at the moment. Do you ever feel the need to just unplug, get away from that rig? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially lately too. Um, it's been uh, it's been a little bit more tedious than normal. Uh, I think time away is, is really important, and it's hard for me right now, just given my circumstances and where I'm living. And you know, uh, like I said, I don't know too many people in the area. But um, I think finding that good balance of just day-to-day -day life sort of mixed in with streaming, right? Like going out with friends or whatever it is, you know, if you're living with somebody, you know, just maybe doing something a couple times a week or like whatever it is, just sort of getting away from the PC. Because I definitely go through um, sort of uh, periods where I'm just really into streaming, right? And I grind, I grind, I grind, stream like 12 hours a day. I'm just loving it, right? And then just out of nowhere, I'll kind of just be like, uh, I'm over this. I want to go, you know, interact in the real world with real people, you know, hang out. And it's it's a it's a very different environment that uh, I think it's something streamers sort of forget about a lot, especially when they're focused on, you know, the things I am, like just grinding it out, you know, just really trying to be successful, trying to grow my channel, trying to, you know, just just be the best streamer I can be and produce like the best content I really can. And I think that the whole social and uh, mental health thing is something that a lot of people overlook uh, during that process. Yeah, and I, I think it would probably ha like being healthy and, and, and happy, right, would make you a better yeah, streamer, right? right? Like just, just how it works. Yeah. And, and what I kind of want to know is like, 
you're a dude who's already streaming, you know, if not every day, basically every day for as long as mm-hmm. you are, which is the thing that people say, like, this is what you need to do to build a stream. Where, how yeah. do you grow a stream above that aside from just like, you know, you happen to, to get, like, you happen to get lucky with somebody like dropping a bunch of viewers in your lap. Like, what do you, what is the concerted effort you do after you're already, it's like, well, I'm streaming for 70 hours a week. Where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. I think it uh, has a lot to do with, uh, I think Twitch growth, you're always going to see um, growth over time. I think that's just natural that come that comes with it, you know, being consistent, you'll see that growth over time. But a big thing is, um, besides the consistency, is just kind of luck too. You know, if there's a hot new game and uh, you jump on it right away, if you already sort of have a spotlight on you, you already have sort of your own community. Jumping on those new games, you know, sort of seeing a fresh audience, you're going to get a lot of people that are just jumping in. They're like, oh, I want to check out this game. This guy looks cool, right? It's a really good way to build your audience. And if, you know, that game ends up being something like Fortnite that just absolutely explodes and, you know, you got eyes from, you know, every corner of the media looking at it, that's like that's sort of where the luck factors in right you you put all your all your chips into one game and then if that game really explodes and sees success just like you know the whole ninja fortnite situation that's sort of where it takes it obviously he's like an outlier in this whole thing but that's where it sort of takes it to another level and i think that's um it's those little things like that that uh, you can't necessarily control completely you can do uh, your best to uh, assure that you see growth whether it's posting clips on every platform or doing something quirky and different on your stream um, I think it's it's those little things that sort of really grow the gap between like a full time streamer with you know five six seven hundred viewers to somebody getting like ten k plus you know. So we we touched on this a little bit when when you were talking about you know feeling a little bit you know not burnt out but a little mad about PUBG sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, looking you're always now you mentioned like you're looking for a new game you're looking for something going on. Mm. Would you consider, you know, just switching your game? Like, I'm not playing PUBG now, I'm playing this. Do you think your audience would move with you? Or are you just thinking, well, I moved to this game and I have to find this new audience? That's uh, that's where it gets difficult, right? Um, a lot of people, especially right now, um, it's sort of audiences on Twitch, I feel like, are centered around specific games. And the BRs, you know, the BRs are all hype right now. Everyone's making a BR game. Everyone loves BR games. There's something about the game mode that really satisfies um uh, players and it's just insanely popular so i think right now uh the most transitionable games would be like a br to a br game but then you have this whole debate over like oh PUBG versus fortnite right there's people that are diehard PUBG fans that will not touch fortnite they'll just trash all the streamers playing it they'll call it you know kids game whatever and then you have the same sort of thing coming from fortnite they just they just clown on PUBG and all its issues all the time so it's like right now i think it's a little weird um I think the Twitch world's kind of just shaken up with everything going on. But uh, transitioning your audience is always a difficult thing for any streamer. I think it's a lot easier if you go to similar games, right? Like you're an FPS gamer, you switch to another FPS game. It's a little easier, and it helps especially if you're, if you're decent at the game going into it. But um, I think that's just always something streamers and broadcasters will struggle with is sort of transitioning their audience. And that's where the core community really comes into play, right? Um, you want to build almost a personal connection with some of these people that are hanging out on your channel all day, every day, you know, they become sort of like your friends, your homies, and they're just hanging out. And I think that's where, uh, it really like variety game streamers. I feel like don't exist as much as they used to variety gaming used to be like a huge thing. You know, we used to play games with our homies every night we, or we play counter-strike all day. And then it'd get to the point where we're just over counter-strike. So we want to play something else and we just all squad up and play like random ass games. And I feel like the variety game, sort of streaming uh like mindset doesn't really exist as much anymore because i feel like it's hard to do because of that that whole transitional audience thing do, do so you, you really gotta go ahead go no, ahead sorry go sorry ahead. go ahead i, I, I was I'll, just I'll, gonna say you really gotta like work on that core audience uh if you want to focus on transitioning games and yeah there, there's things you can do to sort of help it along the way but i think it's always going to be hard for for broadcasters to do it do, do you think that the variety games thing is simply because we have, you know, now you have a streamer for one game and a streamer for another game. If the audience wants to watch that game, they can go somewhere else. But with a variety game thing, you know, they don't know what to expect. It's 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 like you tune into the, you know, you tune into your your favorite channel, but you're not getting your your show at the right time. Like, do you think that's sort of what's yeah, going on there? Yeah. No, definitely. I think. Um, I mean, Twitch. I don't want to say oversaturated, but Twitch has definitely gotten saturated with broadcasters over the past couple of years. You know, because everyone wants to be a streamer. Everyone's like, oh, this is awesome. I want to do this. I want to make money. I want to play video games for a living. Um, and it's, it's really not that simple. And I don't think that's the best mindset to go into streaming with. 
but uh it's uh sorry i just totally spaced what was i saying <laughs> You're, you're talking about yeah. sort of the, the saturation of Twitch, and it's, it's oh, difficult yeah. to go into that with that kind of mindset. Mm. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's difficult, or I don't think it's the right mindset to sort of go into streaming with, but um, a lot of people do it, and that's sort of for broadcasters. I don't think it's it's the best thing. The you know the amount of streamers that Twitch has sort of picked up over the past couple of years, you know, because everyone wanting, wants to do it. I don't think it's necessarily the best thing for the broadcasters, but it's great from a viewer perspective, right? Because you have all these different broadcasters, all these different people, personalities playing different games at different times, whenever. So you could essentially find whatever you want to watch at any time on the platform, right? Which isn't necessarily great for individual broadcasters that are trying to build those core communities. But it's great from a viewer perspective. It's great for the platform as a whole. And uh, I think it's contributed a lot to the growth of the platform and it can, will continue to over the next couple of years. Do you, do you worry at all about there being sort of a, you know, a bubble bursting? We have so many people trying to stream and then their streams don't really take off. And then, you know, eventually we're just left with the, the, the very top of the pool just because people don't want to start streaming if they know that nobody's going to watch. Right. Um. Maybe. Uh, I feel like... Everyone kind of shoots their shot, though, you know? Everyone, I think, will give it a try at some point. And um, whether they end up, you know, continuously doing it or not is up to them. Uh, I mean, that that's sort of always been a thing, right? Trying to get viewers was hard. It's a lot harder today than it was maybe, you know, five years ago. But, you know, anyone could jump on Counter-Strike and throw up a stream, and you would get viewers periodically. Nowadays, you can go through, just scroll through uh, Twitch channels, and you'll just see channels sitting at zero viewers all day. And there's always these channels with zero viewers. And everyone's sort of been there at the start. But to get off the ground now, it, I think it's way harder than it used to be. And you really need to sort of, you know, reach out to your homies or, you know, have your friends and family, you know, post it on Facebook, whatever. Just sort of bump yourself up above all those zero viewer uh, streams. And I think that's sort of what you really, really need to do now more than ever if you want to, you know, thrive on the platform or see any growth at all. Okay, okay. So continuing on this riff a little bit, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for someone who says, oh, I want to do what Chad does. I want to make a living streaming, you know, seven days a week, sometimes 10 hours a day. Uh, what is the right way and the wrong way to go about that? Well, immediately if you're going into it thinking, I want to do this just so I can make money, just so I don't have to work my job. I don't think that's the right mindset to go into it. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily unacceptable, um, just given how big this whole streaming thing has become and how um, and how mainstream it really is now. I don't think that's uh, the worst mindset to go into. Like back in the day, uh, you know, when, when Twitch was just starting to blossom and what it is transferring over from Justin TV, you know, being a heart, like, you know, it, it wasn't nearly as big as it was. The biggest streamers were getting a couple thousand viewers. And I think that, uh, that mindset was a lot less acceptable back then. Right. Cause it was just fun, man. Everyone was just hopping on, having fun doing the whole gaming thing for a genuine reason, because you know, the money wasn't really there at the time. No one was really making decent money from it. And there's only a few broadcasters that were really able to do it full time. Um, I think that that sort of mindset's become more acceptable just because of how much it's grown and, and what it's sort of turned into and, and how it's just dominated the gaming industry so much. Um, I still don't think it's the right mindset. I don't think you'll be very successful if that is all you're looking for. If that's all you want and you're approaching it in a very casual way, I don't think you'll see success. If you approach it like that, you need to approach it with a business mindset and you need to focus it sort of like you could, I think the best example of this is sort of Dr. Disrespect. You know, he puts on he puts on his character every day. He wakes up and he goes to do it, and that's his business, right? His personal life's not necessarily as much in, as involved, um, and I think it even gets a little more involved than it should be. Uh, but that's sort of the route you would have to take if you want to focus on it as a career, as a job, and it's not something you're just, like, doing for fun. I think the best mindset to go into it with is, you know, you're just hanging out with your friends, gaming, having a good time, and you want to share it, right? And if you see growth from that, that's great. And I think you'll be happier in the long run. It'll be a lot easier and less stressful if that's the approach you take. And you still just got to, you know, you got to get lucky. You got to do all the right things and just hope for the best, you know? So no guaranteed formula, in other words. Yeah, no, no. I don't think so. Now, we mentioned uh, a moment ago streaming in the pop culture and in, and in popular mainstream media. A lot of that is mm -hmm. thanks to Fortnite, thanks to Ninja. What are some misconceptions are, or misinformation about streaming as a career that you would would want to clarify or get rid of if you could 
Um, I think uh, a big thing with streaming is the whole, it's, you know, I mean, there's always going to be people that are like, oh, it's not a real job. Like, you can't even call this a job. You can't complain about your job. You know, your problems are, are you know, less equal to my problems because I go out and I, I do this job where I have to actually wake up and show up to a place and, you know, do stuff with my hands. It's like, I think the that's like one of the biggest things I think streamers deal with is um, just just the sort of people don't really have respect for what it takes to get to the level that they're at. Right. It, it takes a lot more um, time and, and dedication than, than a lot of jobs. Right. Like most people can go out and get whatever nine to five or get just, you know, uh, an hourly job at whatever local store or, or chain restaurant or whatever. And I mean, jobs like those suck, but it's definitely a way where you can make money and, and support yourself as where streaming you can't just go out and apply for it right you can't just go out and have it handed to you and then you grind and you make your money you got to grind and a lot of streamers do this grinding for months if not years making little to nothing from it and it just sort of being like a little thing they do for fun it's not a guarantee if you're going to make money it's not a guarantee if you continue to make money um over over the course of however long you're doing it it's uh i mean self-employment in general not even just streaming anything you're doing where you're self-employed I think is always uh, a little more stressful than people realize. And there's a lot more that goes into it that uh, people from the outside perspective don't really understand or, or aren't quite knowledgeable on. And it gives them that sort of ignorant perspective where they don't respect it as much as they would, in, you know, some other job. Yeah, that's right. I think I agree. I think that um, the money is often a focus for mainstream media and mm. that might help them respect it a little bit but i definitely do believe that there are some misconceptions about as you said the grind because it really does seem like yeah. a grind i can't imagine you know putting in the kind of hours and the kind of work that you do f to make to make this successful over uh since what well, you said 2013 so you know mm. uh, quite a number of years now yeah yeah oh go on I was just going to say it's it's crazy. Um, you know, I've known people that, uh, like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dakota's, the uh, Fortnite streamer. Um, we've sort of known this guy in our friend group since, like, the War Z days, since way back. Mm. And, I mean, this man has been streaming on and off, grinding, and then, bam, out of nowhere, Fortnite comes out. He blows up. And, like, this man's been on the grind for, for six, seven years. You know, he's been doing this stuff for a while. And he had a pretty decently uh, popular channel back in the day playing War Z and stuff like that. And then he sort of just fell off, you know, he was grinding other stuff. And then bam, Fortnite explodes, he's right back. He, he's bigger than he ever was. He's one of the most viewed streamers, has one of the highest sub counts on the platform. It's just the, anything can really happen, you know? So with the crazy stuff that's happening right now, um, thanks again in, in part to Fortnite and people like Ninja, mm -hmm. it seems like every couple months we're breaking records. There's like a new thing set like, oh, a Twitch individual stream or, uh, you know, Drake's playing with Ninja now. Now it's this yeah. guy, now it's that guy. Yeah. It's like it's moving so fast. So this is almost an impossible question, but I'm still going to ask it. Where mm -hmm. do you think that streaming as a cultural phenomenon will or could be in the next five and ten years um that's tough to say um because it's sort of just like you know what you think will happen but i could realistically seeing it i think it's already sort of overtaking um you know like cable television you know a lot of people most people i know don't even have cable tv anymore and they end up watching you know twitch i mean it's between like twitch youtube netflix hulu like all that stuff it's sort of just becoming almost the mainstream entertainment for this uh for this generation and i think over time it's just going to continue to go in that direction and you know everyone i mean kids are five years old now with ipads and they can go watch youtube videos all day and like you know go on switch do whatever that's like the mainstream source of entertainment for a lot of this a lot of the kids in this current generation and i think as they grow up with it it's just going to become more normal right it's not going to be such like a strange thing as it is as it is to some of the older generations now right so i think uh i think it's just going to sort of keep working its way into, into mainstream media. And it's because it's going to become something that's, you know, you walk outside and you see things related to gaming and Twitch and, and the industry in general. Uh, I think it's just going to continue to blow up like it has, and it's only going to get bigger from here as far as I could tell. So I, I have to agree there, Chad. I mean, I saw a, a picture and I think it was of like a gas station pump and Ninja, mm -hmm. Ninja was. Yeah. I just on. saw that on Twitter. Yeah. What really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. damn, son. I was like, is this yeah. shocked? I, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. 
But uh, yeah, it, 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 it's actually a lot harder for me to see people suddenly resubscribing to cable than mm -hmm. streaming, just taking over everything, which seems yeah. to be uh, the current thing. So I actually want to shift gears a little bit here. Um, and actually, I heard this on your stream, but also seeing in the background of this shot, we got a BlizzCon poster, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, that was from BlizzCon last year. So, so I heard that you went to BlizzCon, and I'm sort of a the resident Blizzard stand. <laughs> oh, yeah? So I, I'd love to know, you know, was that your first BlizzCon? And it how, was. It was. So could, could you maybe just give me an idea of what it was like to go? Like, I don't know if you're a Blizzard fan at all, or if you went just because friends were going, or like, could you just give me an idea of what your experience was like, and maybe what your best, the best moment about it was? Ooh, that's tough. Um, uh, I'm not like a huge Blizzard fanboy or anything. Like, uh, I have a lot of respect for Blizzard and what they've accomplished in the industry. And, you know, I used to play, you know, the old Warcraft games on PC. Uh, I played like growing up when I was a kid, like Frozen Throne and stuff like that. And, um, I didn't play too much WoW. It was, I was never a big WoW guy. Um, I played a little bit for fun here and there. You know, I'd just jump on. Uh, I'd get a level boost for a character and just, like, run around with my friends and just grind, hang out, you know. Um, it was never something I got super into. Um, same with most of the other Blizzard games. I've played, you know, a decent amount of, like, Here's the Storm, uh, you know, casual Hearthstone player. Uh, I played a bunch of Overwatch when it launched. That game was, like, super, super hype when it came out. So I played that a decent bit on launch, but... Uh, I've always sort of just, you know, been familiar with Blizzard games and their their sort of own little culture in gaming. Um, but I've never been, like, the hugest fan of uh, of Blizzard or anything. So it was, it was really cool to just sort of go and, and see more into, like, their world and just experience, like, all these games that, you know, I necessarily am not in love with. But, you know, I appreciate the game and, and I enjoyed my time playing it. So it's cool to to go in person and see, like all these crazy diehard blizzard fans and i think the best moment honestly was uh, the opening ceremony just sitting down with however many thousand people all just listening to all the new stuff coming out and just really being in that atmosphere where everyone's so excited to hear about all the new stuff and everyone's getting hype on the stuff they're announcing and just i think being in that environment is like the best part of it all because everyone's just like everyone's getting hyped together everyone's you know you turn to the guy next to you, you're like oh shit you hear that you know it's just it's a great environment to be in and i think that was probably like one of the best moments from blizzcon for me I mean that I felt that too. I guess it being yeah. at the opening ceremony. It's and, awesome, dude. Yeah, the energy like, is just crazy. Yeah, and sp specifically, I love that the, the <laughs> note that you made. Like you turn to the guy next to you, like what? Like how is that <laughs> yeah. possible? Um, yeah. Like, I uh, I in 2015 when I was there, they announced Chogall for Heroes of the Storm, mm. where it was two people. Yeah. Like, yeah. Zero. Everybody in the crowd was like, "How does that work? What's going on?" <laughs> so yeah, it was it was uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so so I guess. I know you must have been to other conventions. Um, yeah. You know, what What do you think, like, sets this apart from, like, a TwitchCon or, or another sort of fan convention? Like, what was different about it for you, if you had to, like, qualify it? Um... I think I think Blizzard just sort of does their own thing, right? Uh, I don't think it's really comparable to an event like PAX or like a TwitchCon, where a lot of the people, obviously people are always going to go to hang out with other people and really enjoy that. But Blizzard has its its own just little chunk of of the gaming community and they're it's it's almost like a family. It's crazy. And I think um Mike Marheim ex explained this. He was talking a little bit about this at like the at one of the ceremonies. It might have been the closing ceremony. But um they they do really have their own little just niche in gaming and and uh you know it's it is like a big family man everyone's super super friendly at the event um and it's all blizzard stuff you know it's it's all blizzard's own stuff whereas you go to an event like pax you know you have you have 100 booths all different little indie things and just little things like that it's a lot more concentrated in terms of the um uh the sort of targeted audience and i think when all those people really come together it just creates a whole different environment than like any other event can bring all right, thanks. Thank you for indulging my Blizzard fanboy. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate yeah. it. And, and for me, honestly, it's always interesting to know how people who might not like identify as like a Blizzard, like a Blizzard fan, yeah, how yeah. they view the event. Because I do think, regardless of whether or not you are a Blizzard fan, that that event mm -hmm. is just different. It has a yeah, different flavor sure. from other. It really fans. does. It really does. They sort of create like a world inside the convention center that you kind of just get lost in. It's really cool. So I actually was just 
scrolling through Twitter really quickly, and apparently mm-hmm. Black Ops Four is going to have battle royale. That's what's uh, that's what I've been hearing. Yeah. So I was going to ask earlier if you felt like you maybe need to t- needed to take a break from PUBG, not permanently, maybe not every day of the week, but but maybe yeah. a little bit. Would you consider making the jump? I was going to ask to Fortnite, but but also uh, Black Ops. Um, potentially, it just sort of depends. I think I'll end up trying any BR that comes out just because of, um, uh, you know, how successful I've been in the genre and, and how much I really enjoy PUBG. Uh, I think I could see myself, you know, trying any BR game that comes out. It's just a matter of who's going to sort of do it right. You know, who's going to create the set, the same satisfying gameplay experience that you could get from PUBG, you know, without all the issues or, you know, someone that comes out with their own sort of spin on a BR game, kind of like what Fortnite did. And then you had a uh, you had like Radical Heights that came out, which was you know another another just BR game that that people pushed out and tried to build some hype around. But it, there's a lot of things that need to be done right, and I think now that um, PUBG and Fortnite have seen so much success, they've kind of set the bar for any other BR games that are going to come out. So I mean, everybody is going to be trying to take that take that throne um, from those games, and I just hope to see some some more fun BR games that come out. And I, I'm definitely looking forward to trying them. It's just, uh, it's a matter of, you know, who does it right, who takes the right steps in developing their game and, you know, implements the right stuff to make it, you know, a really satisfying and fun experience to play. Fair enough, fair enough. I want to throw uh, throw it back to the start of our conversation, actually, mm-hmm. when you were talking about um, how you used to play with Shroud and some other people. Obviously, you, you do mm-hmm. still play uh, with Shroud here and there. Um, mm-hmm. How did you meet him? How did you guys end up hooking up? Um, so, so way back in the day, like I was saying earlier, we had a little team speak, um, where all the homies, we, you know, we wake up in the morning, hop on the computer, join the team speak channel, just like hang out, you know, we'd all just do our own thing. If people want to play games, you know, they'll hop in the channel and be like, yo, you guys want to play some games? Uh, and we sort of had that little group. Um, it was, uh, it was like, uh, at the start, it was like summit, our friend, bye our friend, anything, um, and some other dudes, a couple other dudes here and there, uh, over time, you know, just coming in and out. And uh, it was uh, Shroud actually stream sniped. We were playing DayZ back in the day, and he stream sniped Summit. Um, and that's sort of like they, they ended up just like not killing him. I wasn't there at the time. I wasn't playing. But uh, they, they sort of were just like, oh, okay, let's not kill this guy. He seems pretty cool. And then they just kind of like hung out with him in game and ended up just bringing him into the team speak. And we just all like hung out. Uh, you know, we all played CS together, DayZ, all kinds of stuff. And that's sort of where that, uh, where that came from. Oh man, that's actually an awesome uh, like friendship origin story. Like, oh, we stream sniped this guy. We thought he was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He just like he just showed up one day, and uh, we didn't end up killing him. So he became part of the homies, you know. <laughs> it sounds very like Mad Max Apocalypse. It's like, well, this dude came to our door and we didn't kill him, so he's in the clan. He's our friend now. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. <laughs> when um when you did you know, get to know him a little bit and start playing with him. What were your, your first impressions of Shroud? Um, yeah, I mean, he was just a really chill dude. Uh, he was always kind of like, uh, like a weird guy. Um, but, uh, he was always just really cool. Um, I always thought he's, he's hilarious, man. I, I love Mike. He's just, uh, like I find things about him that are very just funny to me that I feel like most other people don't see. And it might just be because I've known him a really long time. But just like seeing how he reacts to stuff and he's just an overall like really cool dude and uh he, you know he, he's a good guy he's, he's a decent guy he's got a, a good head on his shoulders and you know i like to think you know we help keep him where he's at like me and justin and you know all the homies i like to think um you know it, it was a good environment for all of us and i think um it's all sort of helped us grow and develop into the people that we are today that's fair now he's 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 obviously a big quite a big streamer in his own right we oh, yeah. mentioned oh, yeah. ninja here and there but he's a he's a huge freaking fucking deal like shroud is oh yeah i don't know why oh, yeah. i censored yeah, myself trying to remember, like, we can swear on this i try to remember what show i'm on like, yeah it doesn't matter um what do you think uh makes shroud such such a successful streamer um i mean the guy just built his legacy in counter-strike man you know uh the, the dude's easily one of the best aimers that that the game's ever seen and he just has this he just has this weird ability to just like basically aimbot with his hands it's nuts he's got insane reactions and he built his legacy in counter strike man i remember when he first got signed to c9 um back in the day and that's sort of when like that was sort of when the, our friend group dispersed cuz everyone just started going off doing their own things and uh 
And uh, I remember uh, when Mike sort of popped off and he got, he got signed to C9. He just developed in this, this nutty Counter-Strike player. Um, and that's sort of when it, it all kind of started popping off for him. And, uh, you know, um, him just competing in Counter-Strike, he really built just this legacy, just doing these insane, just insane clips. You know, he was always on the top of Reddit. You know, people would call him like the king of Reddit. And so that following really transitioned well um, for him. And I mean, he's always going to be known as one of the greats of, of the Counter-Strike Go era. So I think that's definitely helped a lot. And then, um, you know, like I said, he's just a really chill dude. So it, it's easy to co- sort of just hop on a stream and just like watch him, you know, get clips live. You know, I think a lot of people really enjoy that. And his outreach on Reddit, I think, helped him a ton when he transitioned into a full-time streamer. So the uh phenomenon of him being like incessantly stream sniped is pretty is pretty cool too like that's fun to watch mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. it seems like horribly frustrating for him but i gotta say it's yeah good, it's good entertainment value yeah there's there's definitely some good uh some good times that come out of the stream snipers um but i mean yeah it can be pretty pretty fucking annoying sometimes without a doubt yeah definitely from your perspective like i can definitely see how that gets old really fast did you hear that yeah, uh right. Do you hear that Shroud is gonna is gonna be playing a little bit um, CS professionally again? Oh really? Yeah, he's gonna be in um, like an ESEA team. Um, oh okay. With nothing and Lurpus is on that team. Lurpus, Flaire. Whoa 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 whoa! Yeah. Lurpus is on that. And you didn't know this? No, I heard like, about the team, but I had no idea. This Lurpus is team retirement home. Dude, Lur- Lur- Lurpus. It's literally their their team name is the Old Guys Club, <laughs> and it, it's Shroud, nothing, Lurpus, Flaren. Uh, who's the somebody else on that team? Who's, a, else on that team who's the fifth? Who's the fifth? I don't know. It's someone else old, no, obviously. No. Who's the IGL on that team though? Like who, who's who's? It's gotta be strats? nothing. It's gotta be nothing. You think it's gonna be? It nothing? has to be nothing. Yeah, it has to be nothing. We should ask him. Nothing? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should get him back yeah, on the show. You want to talk to us? Like, yeah. Sorry, that's kind of a weird. Well, thing, hey, <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe it's Chad. Maybe he's the secret fifth member. Oh, <laughs> you never know, dude. Oh, I'm gonna come out of retirement. Sean Gares? No, he's 100% IGL, right? Yeah, Sean's probably, yeah. Sean would be IGL. Yeah, yeah if, he, if he's in it, he's definitely IGL. How, yeah. how are you in uh, Counter-Strike, Chad? You said you guys yeah, played Yeah, he's been it. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I never really competed or anything. I played ESEA and shit. I was Global Elite, all that stuff. But uh, I never really competed. Um, it was just fun. It was just something I really enjoyed in high school, just playing with the homies, you know, and streaming it. Um, it was never something I took really seriously or, or wanted to compete in. You're gonna have to teach Colin how to not take Counter Strike seriously because I think that, that <laughs> yeah, is what's seriously. slowly tearing him apart. It's really hurting yeah. me because, um, unlike you, I suck. So <laughs> it's like really, really painful. I mean, there was that yeah, one, there was that that one round with a shotgun worked out great for you last week. Yeah, yeah, man. The XM is is there a streaming niche for like a shit player who just rages and like hits his keyboard all the time? <laughs> I mean, you could be like the Tyler one on Counter Strike or something, oh, man. I don't know. Oh, no. God, uh, no. You don't God, no. That. I don't want to run it down mid in Counter Strike. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Although you actually could run it down mid. Yeah, just get opt. Yeah. You know, yeah, you yeah, run, run down mid on the dust too, right? As on T side. I'm, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Just toss all... some smokes, dude. You're good. Yeah, <laughs> just toss, just smoke doors. You're fine. Yeah. You'll be fine. Smoke double doors, bro. Run up cat. You're good to go. That's the strat. That's the fucking strat. It's <laughs> well, well, not about cat. rush B. It's about rush cat. No, That's what it's rush. about. Always rush B. No, get the C. Yeah, but they could, they could fast cat on you, bro. You gotta be careful. If they go fast cat from CT spawn, it's over, bro. They're just gonna peek that corner and own you down mid. Oh, it's over every time. There's nothing more frightening than running down cat and like someone just appears in front of you and you're like, I wasn't ready. My knife's out. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the metal gear solid like detected noise yeah, like, really <laughs> cool. yeah. that happens to me way too much oh, um no, yeah. chad as we as we wind this down because obviously we've stopped asking <laughs> questions <laughs> and just talked about being bad at cs oh, um, God. is is there anything uh that we didn't bring up that like you wanted to mention you wanted to talk about or even just like a general uh shout out to all the chad fans out there um yeah man i mean there's nothing really uh i want to go too in depth on um other than you know man i really appreciate uh everybody coming by each and every day just hanging out chatting uh enabling me to do what i do uh for a living you know each and every single day it's uh it's pretty pretty mind-blowing when you really take a step back and kind of look at it all so i mean you know shout out to all the homies that come by each and every day man trying to have a good time i appreciate that uh all these people give me their time and just sort of hang out and uh you know, I'll see how far we can take this thing, man. You know? Well said. Well said. 
All right, Chad. Well, once again, uh, for Josh and Dan, it was a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you for making time out of your extremely busy schedule to talk Man, to us. Man, I don't do shit, bro. I just play games every day. I got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what happened to respecting the streamer uh, grind? <laughs> I seem to have lost Chad, and instead we're being uh, raided by Twitch chat. Oh, shit. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know how this is even possible. <laughs> this is not a live program. <laughs> it's, it it kind of takes over, you know, all those hours of streaming. You kind of turn into Twitch chat a little bit, you know? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's you know, you get when you, when you gaze into the abyss. Yep. You know, yeah. We, back. we speak in memes now. I can't even express how I actually feel. It's it's all how, been how do you, watered how do you, down. How do you as a person feel about the Chad meme? Oh, the, the Chad meme? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's not like, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's like pretty funny a lot of time, but it's so AIDS when people are just like, oh, this guy's such a Chad. It's just like all day. <laughs> like, bro, what the fuck? come on, man. Like what I do to deserve this. <laughs> people okay, well, pop into your stream. They think that's the first time you've heard that joke. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, really, dude? My name's Chad. I didn't fucking know, man. Like, <laughs> it's fine. I, I can relate. Yeah, I get been 21 years. You know? Holy shit. I, I can relate, man. I get damn Daniel so much, and that meme is approximately <laughs> 700 years old. That shit's so dead, bro. Come on. Oh, my God. I got to step up the meme game. Any, any, current, uh. any current favorite memes, I guess, while I'm on the topic? So <laughs> I, actually, I actually do a mm. program monthly, yes. a video monthly about memes where we like explain a meme. And let me oh, tell yeah. you, this is real. This is real. so hard to get them to approve that. Like, really? really? Almost impossible, but somehow... It's know so your meme? Yeah, well, yeah. Like, in that vein, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have any think at the thing. moment or what? Dude, I don't know. Uh, the the like the uh, the Thanos one's pretty good. The I don't feel so good one. Oh, I've, seen yeah. some, I've I've seen some funny ass ones of those, man. Those ones are good. All right. So, I well, mean, with that, I don't well, even know what are the other hot memes right now. Like, like, the Captain like, America meme is very big right now. You know, you know what yeah, I yeah. you know what I like. I I definitely like. We discussed this yesterday, Josh. I like yeah. the the anime like whatever that's. Oh, the guy is, butterfly. Where it's the butterfly is, and it's like, a, is this? A, is this <laughs> Yeah. Is this a Chad? Yeah. Like, yeah, those ones are good too. Holy shit! Yeah. Those ones are lame. I think the original one is "Is this a pigeon?" Yeah. Okay. So I think that's what people are calling the meme as a. Is this a pigeon? Okay. But, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's so good. Like I, I love yeah. it so much. It's, it's so good. useful. Yeah, those ones crack me up. Yeah. Oh. All right. So I guess Chad, uh, since we're not going to end on a serious note, <laughs> I will. I will just w ask you one final, final, final question. Is it, yeah, for is, sure. Is it Yanny or Laurel? Oh, it's Laurel, hundred percent, man. Ooh, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's not Yanny, yo. If if y'all are hearing Yanny, uh, you gotta get your ears looked at or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I have to make an appointment. The doctors. I have to make a doctor's appointment. <laughs> you guys gotta get doctor. Yeah. Can you hear is the Yanny at all, though? I like when I okay the first time I listened to it when I first opened it I was like what the fuck is this I clicked it I heard like a weird like like a Y sound like right at the beginning or like somewhere in the middle and I like I heard that weird like high pitch thing so I figured it was just like something with like very low frequency or like high frequency sounds that like you just gotta like listen to it at the right mm -hmm. like distance or some shit like that I figured it was just one of those but like I knew it was Laurel like straight up I was like it's saying Laurel but you could probably hear something else like the whole like what was it the the blue and blue gold dress, dress yeah. thing or whatever yes. you know it's like it's just like one of those things you know well, so I was right. like, I knew it was Laurel, bro. I'm just saying, you know, I was right. So <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were right. It was in fact Laurel. It was revealed. Yeah. That it was Laurel. So Yanny's are incorrect. Go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, sorry to famed Greek composer Yanny. Yeah, definitely. dude. Y Yanny's pour the milk before the cereal. You know, that's why. That's why. Oh, I'm, wow. Oh, that's that's, that's, actually, that's actually, just wrong. That's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's not that's not cool. That's not cool. Yeah. All right. On that note, Chad, uh, thank you so much. It it has been a pleasure. We do appreciate you making the time, even if you falsely claim <laughs> that you have nothing but time, because we do know you are a busy, busy man. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me on. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Oh, glad to hear it, man. Take care. Good luck in your stream. Hope you uh, get some chicken dinners today. Hell yeah. That's what it's all about, baby. All right, thanks so much, and have a good one. Take care. Yeah, you guys too, man. Take care. All right, I so like glad, I like I'm, how hard he was on Laurel. Like here's he my like, I'm glad you asked like, that Laurel. question. I'm glad you asked that question because when archaeologists, alien archaeologists, find this podcast on a USB drive 
five thousand years in the future, yeah. they will be able to date it down to the exact hour of the day that it was asked because Yanni and Oral is still going on. That's right. Like they'll know because like that's tomorrow right. at this the half life on Yanni Oral is so short. Yes, that's right. That's right. Damn, um, I didn't even think about the archaeological. Yeah, this is. I'm glad that Colin did it because we didn't have to say the date. Like no one's holding up the newspaper, but they know when this podcast is recorded. Point. Well, um. I don't know what your guys – we'll wrap this up pretty quickly, but I, I don't know what your impression of Chad was. I had watched a few of his streams here and there. I know Josh had too, mm-hmm. um, but I wasn't watching him prior to this. I got turned on to him from some people in the office who like him, and I can definitely see why yeah, he's, a, he's, he's been a, a success. Definitely he's, a charming dude. Yeah, he's, he was really fun to talk to. Um, I think we threw some tough questions at him, and he had some pretty good answers, as good as you can get when it's something as speculative as, say, the future of streaming. Absolutely. Right? Though we didn't ask an important question. Do you what's, think he calls that? the viewers? I mean, he said he are the homies, right? But do you think mm-hmm. he calls them Chad Nation? Chad Nation? Uh, he should if he doesn't. The, Chad, is, the Chadlings. Chadlings. That's the correct mm, answer. That's a good okay. one. Chadlings. What about the uh, Chadawan learners? I don't, I, Chadawan I, is – never mind. I'm with Colin Chadawans. I must I must, uh, I'm I must with Colin, exceed to, to Chadawans. But Chad, <laughs> like, Chadling is not actually what he calls his stream to my knowledge. So please yeah. don't. Yeah. Yeah. Chad, Chadawans? Like go, go in there. Stream, stream rating with Chad Wands, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess uh, the future will tell uh, in terms of what he was doing when it comes to considering different games. Maybe he'll switch to pub- from PUBG to something else. We'll have to see. Uh, but I know I speak for you guys when I say it was a pleasure talking to him. We wish him all the success. And uh, hey, maybe he just got a sub out of me. You know, maybe I'm maybe I'm gonna go go up to the computer, go up to the rig here at the Score Esports, click that follow button, follow Chad, sub to Chad. I like how you guys are deep just, in just you, Listen, if you want to, if you, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, I can't. I'm only going to stop you from playing Counter Strike. That's my job. You can't stop me. I'm your. I boss. like how you said the well, rig at the Score Esports is if there's only one computer and we all share it. We all share it, and it's uh, right here, right now. I, oh, we have to get out, guys. Uh, someone needs to do a video down here. Uh, yeah, let's leave. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I heard Yanny first. Now I heard Laurel. <laughs> I'm with you. 100% I, I actually Colin. heard Yanny first, and I then I was too. like, "What the fuck? It's actually Laurel." How I got. I I'm, I'm with you too. I heard yeah. Yanny, then Laurel, and it's been Laurel ever since. Laurel. My girlfriend Laurel. hears Yanny. Yeah, my girlfriend can't hear Laurel. That's fair, man. That's fair. We're all built. We're all different people. We're all different God's people, but we're all together. We all watch streams, and we're all sweating in this hot room. Yeah. Well, I'm. A, I'm. You can't see under the desk, but I'm wearing shorts, so I'm actually chill. Chill as chill AF. You know. But I know you're I, not. I, I have some writing I have to do, so. <laughs> Colin's just, Colin just using this to punish us. Fine, guys. I guess I should eat lunch. For Josh Murray, for Daniel Rosen, this has been Colin McNeil saying until next time on the Scory Sports Podcast, GG.